Mr. TM wants to make his own game in C++. So what do you think Mr. TM does? Well, he finds SFML and starts using it. There are some annoying things about it, but at least it has all the things that he needs. What else could he do? Adonis. When Adonis was just 3 years old and started programming, he faced many challenges. But his first instinct was not to search the web for a library, but to make it himself. So now when Adonis wants to make his own game, he just writes his own graphics library and learns many things in the process. In my last video, someone asked me why I made my own graphics library, and this is what I will answer in this video. As a quick disclaimer, I think that SFML and Raylib are great libraries and I also recommend them in my first Learn C++ for Game Development video. They both have all the things that you need to make a game in one library, and this makes them very useful. So here is my story. When I had just started learning programming, my father gave me this old book that he had about making games in C++, and it inspired me so much. It basically helped me understand what a game loop is, and so I had the knowledge to start making a game, but I just needed a graphics library. The problem was that it took me so much time to be able to find a graphics library and make it work that I even gave up and started to try Unity. After some time, I somehow found SFML and managed to finally configure it. And this is how my first big project was born. I'm talking about the Steradia clone. Now, there are some things that I didn't like about SFML. One of them was the fact that I wasn't able to link the library statically. So I had to ship the games with these extra DLLs and also the fact that it was structured too OOP for me. For example, to draw a texture, you needed a texture and a sprite to apply it to, and render the sprite. And the sprite would have a position and side information. I would rather make my own abstractions, and I will show you why. In this Terraria clown, I'm rendering uh, the map from a matrix. I infer the position of the blocks from the i and j variables. So it is quite redundant to make a sprite for each block. So I did something like this. But here comes the problem with OOP in game dev. I want my object to not encapsulate how it works. I want to know if what I am doing here is expensive or not, because trust me, the game will run at 1 FPS if this operation happens to copy an entire texture inside VRAM. Now, these small complaints, however, were not enough of a reason to make my own library, but it just happened that one friend of mine called Luca asked me to start working at a 2D library for a future project that we will work at together. So, this is how GL2D was born. And I'm so glad that I made it because I learned many new things. And also, it helped me when making my game engine, because I store all the rendering data in this tract, and this helps with implementing the live code recompiling of my engine. Also, it has an API that suits my coding style more. Now, while talking about the takeaways to take from this video, I'll show you some footage of games made using my 2D library. So, I saw many programmers that uh, if they have to achieve something, the only thing that comes to their mind is to use something already made, like a library or a technology. I think that a good programmer can also implement his own things. Now it is also important to know when to use someone else's libraries, but I think that most people fit in the category where they tend to just use something made by the others. And you should remember that things come at a cost. I'll just give you a quick example and I'll end the video. So one friend of mine was making a C++ engine and was using a logging library. Now implementing your own logging library takes like a few minutes. You just need something to print stuff to the console and be able to disable it. Adding an entire library for this and extra features that you won't use probably increases the compile time and may possibly bring some unwanted problems in the future that I would just rather avoid. Using a library for something else like audio, however, yes please, audio is so fucking hard to code. So I hope you found my story interesting. And if so, don't forget to share this video, because videos like this usually make less views on YouTube, and I would love this knowledge to reach more people. And also, if you want to try my 2D library, check out my last video. Link in the description. See you!